are still welcome to our space, our Utopia. Um, today we're going to talk about archives at the one next to Ambassador Hotel. That's that should be my avenue. Yeah. Um. So a lot of us link up in town, and mostly it's either in. Um, Kencom or at the place around archives like where Bata is and Mr. Price is so uh, we are thinking since archives is open yeah, and you can learn a lot of things from there or you could just go satisfy your eyes you know uh, we are thinking you should channel your time that period when you wait for those late comers you know, those people who keep you waiting for like 50 minutes 30 minutes a one hour in town instead of you just standing out uh, outside archives and waiting for them, it would be wise for you to get in, learn a couple <coughs> of things. Learn a couple of things. Sorry for her coughing. Why did you give me that side eye? Because you're coughing and I'm talking. Okay. <laughs> so people will not hear what I have said. Anyway, yes, instead of waiting outside archives, it would be wise for you to get in and then see the artifacts that they have, um, learn about different people like uh, Wangari Mathai, our presidents and uh, our current governors. There's just a lot to learn. There were so many people, the Kamba, the people from Ivory Coast. Um, yeah, most of the countries in Africa and also the Queen, Queen Elizabeth, that is uh, the current Queen now. If you are watching the crown or if you have watched the crown there should be that highlight moment where you're like yes I know that yes I know that <laughs> or maybe it would add up to what you already know so like to talk about the charges also the charges are 50 for adults 25 20 20 20 for children and then 200 for non residentials yeah which is quite affordable I mean yeah and uh, Yes, that that should be it. So I think I've talked about location, I've talked about charges, yeah. So we are diving into the other section where this master over here tells us more. <laughs> this this what? I show a master. No. Mistress. <coughs> no. What a little mistress. Anywho. Yeah. Moving on. Um. There are so many artifacts in the archive. I was fascinated with the spiritual artifacts. She was fascinated with the history of Kenya and the president and the governors and the so she was fascinated with those kinds of things. But I focused more on the spiritual yeah. bits. So the, the first um, artifact I'm going to talk about is the fire spitter. It was a mask that was worn in the Ivory Coast. Mm -hmm. Uh, the mask is called the Ponyugo. It represents a mythical being who protects the community from sorcerers and soul stealers. For all of us who believe that we have souls and human beings, <laughs> um, when you die, your soul leaves your body. And wherever that soul goes, to, whether it's purgatory or it roams in the wild, we all have souls and they go somewhere after we die. So for this community in particular, they believe that they are these souls. They uh, they believe that they are these people who can harness the spirits or the souls of humans once they die. So the mask was meant to prevent these soul stealers from stealing souls of people. Um, the mask used to recall the chaos of the world before it was set in order, and it appeared in groups after death. And it's speed fire, it literally uh, people would gather around in, in small circles and a cleft stick was put in front of the mouth it was blown by the dancer who was dancing around the mask so that's it, it it was called the fire spitter wait hold up now what would this soul stealers do with the souls i think witchcraft like now send them to do that <coughs> work for them yeah okay and also, you see, that's why you say rest in peace. So for you to rest in peace, your soul has to rest in peace. If it doesn't rest in peace, it comes and haunts people and do all those kinds of things. So, yeah. To avoid roaming souls and uh, using souls poorly. Yeah. The guys used to wear the masks. 
The second item I'm taking you back to Kenya. Um, it shows the birth of Mumbi. From our social studies, uh, Mumbi and Agikuyu were the two parents who birthed the Kikuyu community. So this sculpture in particular, it depicts the genesis of the birth of the Kikuyu tribe. Um, according to the legend, the tribe originated from Mumbi, as I've said earlier, and Mumbi was the first woman. But she was one of the first nine female children. At the base of this sculpture, as you can see, um, the head of a primordial woman is in the throes of childbirth. Mm -hmm. At the top of the sculpture are the nine breasts representing the nine females who were given who are given birth who are given birth to the nine females from whom Mumbi mm -hmm. was one of them. Among them is Mumbi in <coughs> Wait, hold up. So Mumbi was among the nine. Yeah. Oh, she wasn't the, the originator of the lineage. Mumbi was the Mumbi was the originator of the Kikuyu community. Oh, okay. So there are nine women, but Mumbi was oh, Kikuyu. No, I get yeah. Yeah. So Mumbi is shown as a young fetus, symbolically protected from evil within the mighty hands of Mugwe, considered to be the original leader of the Kikuyu people. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> the third item um, is the sculpture no, made by Akisima known as Elkana Ongesa and this comes from a long line of traditional stone carvers as you can see it's the white <coughs> excuse me, white stone carving I can't even tell what it is at first I thought it was the eye of a bird a big uh, or a big eye but um, this guy originated from the southwestern Kenya. Elkano was the first in his family to combine the innate skills with the broadening influence of training from Makerere University in Kampala, that is in Uganda, mm -hmm. and the University of Nairobi in Kenya. So this guy actually learned here yeah. and he's a legend. Where he completed his postgraduate thesis on stone carving in East Africa. Mm -hmm. And Kana then went into teaching and continuing to produce high quality sculptures, two of which grace Ta -da -da! the United Nations headquarters, not in Kenya, but in Paris and New York. Who are Kenyans? Mm -hmm. Who are Kenyans? Who are we? Be proud of ourselves. <laughs> I'll take you all the way to Nigeria. Nigeria, they have a community called, they have different communities, the same way in Kenya we have the Kuyu, yeah. the Luos, the Luyas, the Kisis, they have different yeah. tribes. There's the, the Yoruba, there's the Igbo. <clears throat> so the Yoruba are believed to be more, how do I put it, they give birth to these twins, to, they have multiple oh, yeah. births, births yeah. a lot compared to other tribes. So the Yoruba tribe, they used to have these sculptures called effigies, meaning the twin. And they are carved out of wood for children of multiple births who die. So if a, a, a lady gives birth to two to twins or yeah. two triplets and then one of them happens to die, they carved wood that symbolized both twins. Uh, that is the living one and the dead one. Um, as it is thought, the souls of these children who had, who died and the living ones, they're inseparable because they were born as one. Yeah. Not literally, but they, they were in the stomach together. You, you know how twins are. So they were born as one and their souls also is inseparable from the living twin. And the, the dead twin may return to take the living twin if he or she is not placated. So these people would carve these wounds to appease the dead child so that uh, the soul of this dead child would not come and haunt and take away this living child. And mothers used to feed this carving, this wood carving, it being a living thing. They would feed it the same, same way they would feed their living child. So if I give this, my, my living child milk, I'll still come and give this wood carving milk. If I give them garlic, I'll still give this wood wood having a gun. Wait, so um, um, my, my question is, um, mm -hmm. is it whatever the other child eats or it also comes in the form 
the child was given the, or the, the form in which the child received the food. Because I'm, I'm questioning myself if maybe this other twin, mm -hmm. one, one of the twins died before um, or maybe immediately after birth. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that if I'm breastfeeding this kid, I also have to breastfeed the cabin? Yeah, the same same food you're giving to these living twins, the same same food you give to this dead child. That is the wood carving that represents what this dead child is. If you do not do so, the child comes and takes away the living child's soul. So it was more of protecting the living, living child. One. Yeah. Uh, the next item um, is an Ethiopian shield, is Ethiopian shield and, and sword, the Ethiopian weapon. Um, they were made out of hippo skins. I don't know how supportive I am of this. I am all for the animal welfare and taking care of yeah. animals, even if <laughs> some people are trying to make me backslide. Mm -mm, that is not happening. No, we have to talk about this. So, recently, <laughs> Cindy watched some, some documentary on how cows are tortured before they are slaughtered there. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So she says, I will not take meat anymore. But then I ask her, so you won't be doing barbecues? She's like, eh. I will, I will not take meat on specific occasions. Yeah. And she's saying, okay, so I told her, say you're cutting down on red meat and not that you're, you're not going to have meat ever again. And she's like, no, I'm in the process of, I, of not eating meat again. These are the people we call enemies of progress. Guys, if you're set on doing something, it's a process. And that's when there are things called baby steps. And I'm taking baby steps right now. I've cut down on my milk intake. I've cut down on my meat intake. A apart from... Just say you're cutting down on this. Because if there's barbecue and you're saying you, you will decide to have meat at that barbecue, that doesn't mean that you're going to, to stop having meat. That means that you're cutting down on your intake. I stopped eating meat. I'm just... Yeah, I will. I said I will stop eating meat. But as for now, I have... <laughs> Now, I said eventually, I will get there eventually. I don't know when the eventually will be. If it is on my deathbed, well and good. That was the will of nature. But if it is not, yay. So as I was saying, moving on to the serious fun stuff. <laughs> the, Ethiopian, <laughs> this, the Ethiopian shields are made of hippo or rhino hides um, that were pounded or shaped into round shapes. And sometimes it had decorative bumps. It had decorative bumps that were on the heights of these animals. Mm -hmm. So these things were the, the skins of these animals were made into shields, which are actually really, really effective during battle. Mm -hmm. The next story is actually a Bible story, and it's a story of King Solomon, who was, who was known as the richest man on earth, stroke wisest. I don't know how true that is, but yeah. To see it in the Bible. So this image with seven hundred concubines and three hundred wives. An interesting thing. It, it must be wise to handle all those women. I'm just thinking. Because see, as a leader, you have to be wise to be a leader. You know, if you are one of the women he was associated with, you don't see your guy after two years. Wow, that's a nice life. <laughs> Yeah, but you get to see your man after after two years. So you see him once in two years. And you're okay with that? It's a nice life. Well, I don't think I, I, I agree with you on that. I'm sorry. Well, it's not so bad. Seeing your man, your man. You no, know, you get to see him every day. You just don't spend every day with him. I don't think you get to see him every day. Cause he's the king. This is the king. Yes, exactly my point. So you don't get to see him every day because he's the king. He has other things. He has he has authority. He has responsibilities. But I'm he has this. things to dis I mean solve disputes, blah blah blah. And then he has the, the seven concub seven hundred concubines and there are three hundred ways here. You can't see him every day. He actually can. You can't. He only has twenty four hours a day. You cannot see him anymore. You see, uh, have you ever seen these um, Jewish movies where the kings used to just sit and then they handled like 10 cases in a day and then after that it's drinks and wine and women and all that. 
So I'm thinking if I was to just have a glance at him, I'd have a glance at him. And you'd be okay with that? Ah, I want to spend time with my pastor, you know? <laughs> <laughs> And also I'm jealous, I don't want to see you with other people. I want you to myself. So anyway, he must have been wise. That was the, that was the point. <laughs> anyway, this Ethiopian ad, it defeats the story. Oh my God, sorry. It depicts the stories in panels, um, much more like the modern comic strip or a film. This it tells the story of the historic meeting and union of the legendary King Solomon and our one and only Queen Sheba from, from Ethiopia. Ethiopia. For those who did not Ethiopia. know, Ethiopia. Queen Sheba was Ethiopia from is here. Ethiopia. Ethiopia is of, here in Kenya. Okay, yeah, yeah, somewhere here. <laughs> Um, so the union of King, King Solomon and Queen Sheba led to the uh, dynasty of King Menelik. So if you read about King Menelik, there's King Menelik 1, King Menelik 2, King Menelik 3. So all those descendants are from King Solomon and Queen Sheba from Ethiopia. And let me mention Queen Sheba was from Ethiopia because it is very, very important. We made history in this world. We don't even recognize that. And we trust those history. women. And expect women from Ethiopia. Oh my God. Beauty. Beauty. Okay, I'm, I'm just saying. Beautiful. But in general, Africans are beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. But Ethiopia either. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> the next art is the Tinga Tinga art. For the most the Tinga Tinga tale. <laughs> Oh, we have a show in Kenya called the Tinga Tinga Tales. It Tales has a really Africa. nice song. Yeah, the one she sang, Tinga Tinga. It's, it, it tells stories about the African wild animals, yeah. like zebras and giraffes. And yeah. yeah, I'm not even thinking they got that name from that. Yeah. Right, yeah. So the Tinga Tinga art was done by a guy called Tinga Tinga, sings the name. Uh, it, the guy is from Tanzania and it was done from around 1950. I'm a corner by tribe. Yeah. Uh, his cause. This is the tribe that I was telling you guys was added in Kenya. So it's a tribe in Kenya actually. It's the, the Makonde. Yeah. Mm. He's from Makonde. Yeah. yeah. So the Makondes. He's Kenyan. <laughs> he's Kenyan. Then he was Tanzanian. <laughs> yeah, he is, but he's also Kenyan. <laughs> no, he's because we've now accepted the tribe. So he's Kenyan. <laughs> Anyway, as you can see from the ad, his unique style, style his unique bird and animal painting was soon copied by many other artists in, in Tanzania in what came to be known as the Tinga Tinga style of art. Although Tinga Tinga himself died in 1972, there are now numerous disciples of this style, and you can see from the ad yeah. out there in the street of this style, which was say to be quote and quote sophisticated yet naive work mm. um the earlier painters who adopted this style were some of them were mpata Ruta, his brother and sky isa who whose works were collected by mr and mrs murumbi during the 1960s and if you know about mr murumbi he was a collector yeah, of things was. and if you also visit the archives you, archives you can see this he collected things like the ethiopian what are these things called um, I'm doing this uh, Ethiopian crosses. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh, I was like, um, <laughs> the books. He was a collector of so many things. Yeah. See, that, that really shows how I don't want to say wise because it will look like I'm being biased. But you see, biased, and someone is wise is wise. You're not being okay, biased. Yeah, I think he was a really wise guy to collect all these artifacts, all these books, and to, to just deep dive into them and to know a lot of these things, a lot of cultures, mm-hmm. but it was interesting. The next item I'm going to talk about is the mummy water. This is from Eastern Nigeria. The mummy water was a water spirit. Oh, these spirits things that are, today if I do not have nightmares, pray for me, be gone. The mummy water was a water spirit which was used for both cult purposes i do not want to get into that and entertainment yeah uh entertainment masquerades uh it was produced by the Ibibio covers and other artists between the niger delta and the cross river in southeastern nigeria mm-hmm. nearly all the spirits this is what these people believed were white or fair skins 
Uh, some with mermaid type tails, often in rift snakes. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Why? You don't you want to talk about mermaids? Uh, I actually want to ask you this. Do you think they really exist? Because I just hear of them in stories. Yes, there was a time I saw a video of a mermaid, but I was like, do they really exist? I've not seen one. proof of one. I've seen one in, in YouTube and in all those videos, but I've not seen one with my own eyes, so I can't really confirm that yes, these things exist. But if I was to base them on the YouTube videos, I'd say yeah, they exist. But with my own personal experience, I do not know. I have no idea. Also, if you know where or you've heard of where we can see mummies from, please tell us. We need to know. Maybe we can visit that place and see this mummies for ourselves. And probably document it and also make other people believe that mermaids or exist. Yeah. So these guys be, uh, believe that there's an ambivalent attitude towards the spirits which can reap both excuse me, both havoc or bestow great riches. Um there are mummy water diviners, priestesses and followers who are under the spirit's influence. Hey, these guys really believe, man. And often go into a trance. The carvings also refer to the destructive nature of outside influences on local traditions. This part I agree with them. The outside influences on local traditions, we have experienced this in our lives up to date, and it's something we cannot deny. And I hope we really, really get out of that hold that these people have put on us. I hope we really do. Which do? Our colonizers. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> Why are you lolly? Because <laughs> can. <laughs> anyway, the next item is the oh my god, Kurumba antelope crest. It's from the it's from Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso is a country in Burkina Africa. Burkina Faso, not Burkina Faso, my Burkina, friend. Burkina, you say no? It's Burkina Faso. If you've watched um, what's this called? This one is Teresita. Queen of the South. She says Porte, not Porte. So I'm saying Burkina Faso isn't isn't an it's, a, it's in Burkina Faso in in Africa. Uh, this craze, I think it was used at the end of morning period. Um, <laughs> the souls must be expelled from villages, and this was symbolic enough that you can relate it to the to the present times. The way we pick up soil when someone is buried and yeah. then we throw it on the coffin to show that we've let go of this person. I think that is that is how I take it. Is that how you take yeah. it? Yeah. That is what it symbolizes that symbolizes it that bit for me. So these people used to wear this crest um, during the morning periods to expel the souls of the people who are dead from the villages. And the Kurumba dancers would appear with these elegant headdresses with its polychrome motifs on their heads and that's <coughs> Expel the souls of these people. You can tell us about this. should have done this. <laughs> the Swahili crest. Oh, no, actually, I am going to talk about the Swahili simias. Those simias are huge guys. <laughs> they are gigantic. Like, I, I don't know. Maybe I can't even I can't even express how huge they are. I just know they're gigantic and the one should express it. <laughs> so uh, they used to use seniors for the men and then they would serve men food. You know how the the is the Muslims. Yeah. I wanted to say the Muslim Muslim Muslim. Muslim. No, but also Muslims. But you see all, all, not all Swahilis are the Muslims. Muslims. Okay. Yeah, true. But I wanted to give something close so that people understand. Just say the Swahili. Okay, fine. So the Swahilis used to eat, especially the men, eat together in one senior. <laughs> and then I would also like to talk about the Swahili the chest of treasures. Oh yes, the, the, but that wasn't the Swahilis. It was um, it 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 was a treasure box. They belong to a master, and the slaves are the ones who used to like take care of it. So you are required to clean it, and also when there was movement from one place to the other, the slaves are the ones to carry it. It's quite heavy. 
yeah we wanted to see the insights but we were not allowed to i'm hoping that one of the attendants in Athens will one day at least open for us so that we get to see the insights also i need to tell you um if you like reading and you'd like to know more about the history of probably africans kenyans um some parts of the europe um yeah generally the world because because there's a lot a lot of things there uh you could go talk to the attendants and then they could show you the books probably give you a space where you can do studying and you'll be reading sorry <laughs> actually reading and studying judge your small notes and yeah for 50 bob imagine just 50 bob 50 kenya shillings <laughs> um there's also stamps we got to see lots of stamps like the ones that every coast use congo um the europe stamps the ethiopian stamps there are so many stamps i would i think probably probably stamps to every african country and uh who does letters in you who does letters they must still do letters they do you even do letters locally you can't say who does letters anyway honestly who does let letters yeah. like i've sat down i'm writing a letter then stamp yeah. it and, and send it i actually do it i write letters to myself the right it has to people to to my loved ones yours is coming it's on the way but they do write letters mm -hmm. it's a it's a for nice the years, they have sensitive no way. way guys for all the years i just have a bad <laughs> right now I know I the letter. <laughs> <laughs> and she says she let she wow she writes letters that's a lie i do no, i don't. used to do it in high school okay then maybe but now i you ask who does like, letters anymore like jose was going through my old stuff and then i found these mementos uh the high school ones mm. those two small notes for used to send to you i used to keep those things then you sent me a picture that picture was bad <laughs> <laughs> on my birthday she used an embarrassing photo of me to tell me happy birthday but I'm not on it at Insta because I'm learning to be a better person. I said, okay. But it was a nice gift then. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so there were lots of stamps. Um, there were also hunting knives that men use. A lot of them to hunting knives. I I think this one's here. Yeah. Um, what else is there? There's so many artifacts. Oh, there was the Swahili bed. What was it made of? Mm, Sisal and wood. Sisal and wood. Yeah. If you asked me, they seemed pretty comfortable. I would actually get myself and one. And boji. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> for that time. Yeah, for that time. Actually, the, the, the art and the style of making the bed has been copied till date. So you can't even say we didn't use the past things to reference to our modern day style. Yeah. And then upstairs, upstairs, uh, there is a uh, the tree as used by Jomo Kenyatta, our first president. But you can't touch or you can't sit on them. Actually, most of actually every single thing is not to be touched. Of course, for obvious reasons like COVID and also the fact that some was a COVID. I did yeah. COVID nineteen, <laughs> <laughs> and also for the fact that when something is up. Uh, Touched or in use a lot, it depreciates. Yeah. yeah. So I think they try to preserve it for like years and years and years. Like my three generations after me or four generations after you are able to read our history, which is quite interesting. Some of these things are very, very interesting. And there are also people who are assassinated in political stuff. If you're interested in politics, there's a section for that. Um it's just a lot. This county zero zero one to zero forty seven. Mm -hmm. County zero zero one. Mombasa. <laughs> oh no, it's. I think it is Mombasa. It's not Mombasa. It's. It's. If I call them, it will be no, no. Kwale, Kwale should be two or three. Zero, zero, oh, one. zero zero one is Mombasa. Mombasa yeah. And then zero forty seven is of course Nairobi, our capital city. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I find it quite interesting and especially this this I mean knowledge is for free it doesn't have to know something and if you like reading this is a place for interesting if you like taking pictures you can take pictures downstairs especially the artifacts not the documents 
so if you just like ah i'm bored i'm in town and i want some cool photos go there before we end this video so to those spiritual people who want to connect with much more deeper things that happened in the past and you want to relate them to the future please archives is your place and of course we're going to end this video with our legendary icon Dun -dun 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 -dun. drum rolls Wangari Mathai <laughs> So Angari Madai, as you know, was known for her famous Nobel Peace Prize yeah. award, but this woman was really legendary. Like, she had so many awards since 1984 to 2011, and I'm going to read all of them, and there's so many. <laughs> so just sit back and relax and appreciate <laughs> 1984 i'm going to read each and one of them 1984 right livelihood award 86 better world society award 87 global 500 role of honor 91 goldman environmental prize 91 again the hangars projects africa prince for leadership 93 edinburgh medal for outstanding contribution to humanity through service 93 Jane Adams Leadership, 94 The Golden Ark Award, 201 The Juliet Hollister Award, 203 Global Environmental Awards, World Association of Non Governmental Organizations, 204 Conserv Conservation Scientist Award from Columbia University, 204 J. Sterling Norton Award, 204 Petra Kelly Prize, 204 Sophie Prize, 204 The Famous Nobel Peace Prize Award. 206, the Legion de Honor of Honor, that is in French. <laughs> 207, World Citizenship Award. 207, Indira Gandhi Prize. 207, Cross of the Order of Saint Benedict. 208, sorry, 208, um, the Elizabeth Blackwell Award from the Hobart and William Smith Colleges. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, 209 NAACP Image Award, that is the Chairman's Award. 209 Grand Cordon of the Order of the Rising Sun of Japan. 211 the Nichols Chancellor Medal Award by the Vanderbilt University. 13 guys, 13 good. No, 23 good. 23 good awards. awards. This lady started having awards from 1984. So if you're not inspired by the African sculptures and crafts and arts please let the lady inspire you yeah. even in her death she still <laughs> continues to inspire people okay so let's see in the next video we're going to showcase someone who does good uh, such good i mean no you wait and see you have to subscribe uh, click on the notification button get the notification when we upload it okay bye bye guys